Hello, in this short tutorial I'm going to tell you about a free tool I use to create XY plots from a picture file. The software is called Engage Digitizer and can be downloaded for free from the website listed. Oftentimes when using SolidWorks simulation I need to look up material property curves such as a stress strain curve for a nonlinear study or an SN curve which is used for a fatigue study. I'm going to show you how to use Engage Digitizer to extract the raw data for an SN curve for three different materials from a picture I've downloaded from the internet. Once inside of Engage Digitizer, all I need to do is import my downloaded picture file. So I choose File, Import, and then I can browse to my picture file and click Open. Once this is open, we are shown a wizard that will help guide us through the process. Once we click next, we are able to name our different curves. So in this case, I'm going to name one curve 1045 steel. The next will be 2014 T6 aluminum. And then the last one is red brass. We are then presented with some options for how our curves will be drawn. In this case, I'm going to choose with lines. I can finish out the wizard and then on the right side we will see the different steps that we need to go through in order to digitize these curves. So to set up our axes we're going to use the axis point tool. You'll notice that our x-axis runs from 1000 to 10 billion and is on a logarithmic scale. Our y-axis goes from 0 to 500. I'm going to zoom in on the lower left corner of our axis and select a point where the two axes cross and I'll enter 1000 for the X and 0 for the Y point. Over on the right side I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select my point and this time I'll type in 10 billion because that's what's represented on the X axis and then 0 for the Y axis. Now pulling my window over uh, to the Y axis and bringing it up we'll see our 1000 and 500 point so again I select that point type in 1000 for X and 500 for Y. Once that's done we'll get a quick preview of the boundaries of our plot and again I just want to point out our X axis is on a logarithmic scale so we do need to change a setting to put that on a logarithmic scale so I just go into settings and coordinates and here under X coordinates you'll see that we can choose log as our scale. So now the next thing we're going to do is set up the points on our curves. So I'm going to use the curve point tool. I'll zoom in on my steel curve and then just start selecting my points. I'm going to make sure I grab my end point and then I'll just start making selections along this curve. Now the more points you select the higher the resolution. So as we get down to this tight corner I'm going to start selecting a lot closer together and then as we go straight again I'm going to get a little bit more spacing. So the more points you select the more information you're going to get in the end. Next I'll select aluminum from my curve list. I'll scroll down a bit to find my aluminum curve and then again I'll just start selecting points along this curve. This time I'm going from right to left and it doesn't really matter which way you go as long as you're still picking in order. I'll make the last few selections for my aluminum curve and then we'll move on to the red brass curve. Again making sure we pick that end point and then a few points along the curve. Once all of our points are selected we can now export our curve. To do this I choose file export and notice it's going to save this as a CSV file that can be imported in software such as Excel so I'll go ahead and save that and then we'll jump over to Excel. Once I'm in Excel I can go ahead and import my CSV file so I'll browse to my file make sure I choose all file types so I can see that CSV file and then I'll select that. 
Once that's imported, you'll notice we get all of the raw data from all those points we've selected. And you see that it's separated by material. Now we can very quickly throw together a quick scatter plot. So I'll choose scatter and this time I'll just do curves without points. And you'll see that it brings in those curves. Our x-axis isn't shown on a logarithmic scale so I can adjust that. We'll also adjust the minimum and maximum point. We'll match that to our picture. So that's 1,000 and again 10 billion. And then we'll choose logarithmic scale and then I can close that out. And now we're left with an Excel chart that shows us that information that we saw in our picture.